Hi and welcome back to Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch. It's September the 8th, 2018. It just so happens to be the day before my birthday, so if you want to give a little shout out, I'd appreciate that. But uh, I wanted to take you on a garden tour today. Um, haven't done one in a little while. Kind of give you an update. Um, you, as you guys know, I'm a, a school teacher, so we just completed our first week back. And so I haven't had a whole lot of time to do any videoing and really get out in my garden lately. But I did do some things before school started, actually the night before. And what you're looking at are some strawberry plants that I started. Uh, so I bought some bare root plants. Um, I think the varieties are Albion and All Star, or um, Ozark, excuse me. And so just, let's say I planted them on Labor Day. And so what we got about five days, I guess. And there's quite a bit of new growth on on a number of the plants. Now, not every one of them has woken up, and they may not all even survive. Um, but who knows? You know, all I can do is do what I can, and you know. But I just wanted to show you, um, and my plan is. I got some right there, and I got right here, so you can see a lot of the new growth that's popping out. So I plan on transplanting them out in the fall once the pumpkins are done, and then let them overwinter. Hopefully, no rabbits will uh, go after them. But um, I've had that happen before in another place, and um, you know, it it really it didn't kill the plants because they grew back, but they uh, did not really produce anything either. So I may have to cover them up over the winter and everything. I may have to do that. I may have to even do that when the fruits and everything set to keep the critters from coming in and getting them. Otherwise, I'll never get anything. Um, cross that bridge when I come to it. Over here to my onions. Kind of had um, some success, but not. some things just aren't really doing as great. So I bought fresh seed and some of it came up and other stuff just really hasn't done. I mean, there's a little bit in it, but I put quite a bit of seed. And over there, there's only one. So, you know, some of this new seed stuff just don't sit, doesn't seem to be working. Um, heading towards the backyard uh, for a little bit. I do have one pumpkin back here growing, and um, this was an unplanned one. Ooh, ooh look, it's getting starting to get big. You can see the white one right there. So uh, this is actually probably a polar bear variety, and what it is is that um, this is growing out of my compost pile right there you can see the other plant over there and this was just a you know i had a, a pumpkin that i grew from last year and um kept it in my classroom all uh, pretty much the whole actually the whole year took it home at the uh, end of school year and just kind of just put it in the compost pile didn't even bother cutting it up or anything like that just put it in the compost pile it didn't take long being out in this heat in the summer that it just you know, just pretty much disintegrated that whole plant. And out came the shoots, as I probably figured, I knew it would. And I was able to get this one to um, pollinate, and it's growing. Um, I don't know what size it's going to get, and don't really care. The fact that I got one out of a compost pile is kind of cool in and of itself. Um, I don't think there's... any females out on this one over here that's okay you know there's one growing and that's it's not that long of a vine either not for pumpkins anyways there's not a whole lot of um secondary and tertiary vines growing out of this stuff so that's interesting um over here at my grape plant, my only surviving grape plant, I pulled out the other one. It just was not good anymore. But uh, after it 
it was able to survive the Japanese beetle attack of 2018 um, with some help from me. <laughs> um, but they'll be back. So it's finally getting a chance to really grow some leaves and everything and get some strength and we'll see if it does even better next year. I was able to get maybe one or two grapes off of it before the birds, I guess, came and got the rest. And they actually tasted pretty decent. It was kind of hard to tell, uh, to know exactly when these Concord grapes are ready to harvest, but uh, did anyways, and we'll see. Uh, this was where the other um, plant was, and like I said, I, I took that out. Um, but here's another addition, a uh, new addition to my garden, and that's some raspberry plants. And so, um, you can see the bare root stick right here, stem, and, you know, we just kind of dug, dug some holes and, you know, added fertilizer and things like that, mostly nitrogen to get some leaf growth going, and, um, I got four of them I bought, and, uh, they were saying that a lot of the times says, don't be surprised if the new growth doesn't actually start growing from the stem and then start growing up but actually starts popping up in other places in the soil um, as a result of the uh, rhizomial action that that's how these uh, plants really get going and uh, like I said here's another one here and another one there now my memory and I should have known better I know I have, uh, I bought two varieties, I think uh, one's called Himble, or Humble, I uh, know, Himbo Top, and the other one is uh, Caroline, Caroline Red, and for the life of me, I cannot remember which ones or which. I know these two are the same there, and I know these two are the same here. I just can't remember right now which ones I planted first, and I wish I did. <laughs> I'd like to know which, because if you go out there and, and grow it, and uh, it tastes great, you want, may want to grow some more of them. If you find one that just doesn't suit your taste, you don't want to pick that one again. So. I'll have to rack my brain and see if I can come up with a solution, uh, an answer to uh, my memory problem. <laughs> uh, blueberry bushes doing their thing, you know, they'll be going in the dormancy and just trying to get some new growth on some of these, uh, which I have been on most plants, but this is my biggest concern on this one is whether it's going to start getting vigorous again. I've did a little bit of pruning on the ends to try to stimulate a little bit of growth and I've not had much success with that, so I don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, goji berry plant, finally doing a little bit of flowering. Um, I had a really good apple on this uh, Jonathan apple tree, really big and uh, nice and red and everything, and I come out one day and it was gone. Yep. You can see a bad, a rotten little thing right back there. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that's that's what happened with that. And uh, Fuji apple tree. I got one apple up top. Um, so that one is at least surviving. I see maybe one wormhole in it, but... It seems to be a, it'll hold. Uh, I did have a, one or two on here on my um, honey crisp, but they're gone. Uh, this was another goji berry plant, barely any flowers on it. And my Jonathan, no, excuse me, my um, Fuji can't really tell if there's any more apples on it or not. I picked about two or three um, that were bad and I uh, just kind of cut out the bad stuff and ate, ate a little bit of the good stuff that I could find. And it tasted pretty decent. It wasn't 100% right, but it was, it was there. 
I could taste the flavors and I could taste the future of what hopefully I'll be able to get. Um, so over here to the busy pumpkin patch. And when I say busy, I mean it's gotten, things have kind of heated up here. Now I got several female flowers that have opened up today. Uh, did have a bit of a loss the other day though. Uh, I had two pumpkins growing on this trellis. And they didn't seem to be all that big at the time, at least not big enough to cause uh, any concern. I knew I was eventually going to have to, you know, put a, make a hammock underneath it to support it. But one of them uh, snapped off anyways. And I found it on the ground and it stripped some of the, you know, layers from the vine and everything. And uh, didn't kill the plant, but I uh, was upset that I didn't get out there in time. I just didn't think it was big enough to really be concerned about at that moment. But... I was wrong and so what I then did was that with the other one as you can see I took an old shower curtain and uh, cut it and I have it in there supporting that pumpkin right in there and so it seems to be doing a pretty good job pumpkins getting a decent size I'm just kind of feeling around in there and uh, she's getting she's getting pretty good and that's a Howden pumpkin, so that's hopefully going to be my uh, my uh, prize. Now, I'm a little bit jumpy when I get near the pumpkin patch in the morning time because bees are out here galore, and I am afraid of bees. So if I get a little skittish and panicky, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, like I said, I got several that have opened this morning, mostly on the other side of the patch. You can see the fog when I was out here earlier this morning, it was such a beautiful sunrise. There were some really fluorescent orange clouds just, you know, hanging over the uh, fog. You can, like I said, you can still see the fog across the field there. But if you could imagine, maybe if I could step over here and out around this tree a little bit. If you can imagine, see that white cloud off in the distance that's kind of rising up there? Hopefully you can see that. And, um... <clears throat> that was being that was like a fluorescent orange earlier and um, it was really pretty just hanging over that fog and you can see the sun over there popping through the trees and the fog and the haze hopefully this is showing up on the camera um, and it was just like I said fluorescent orange and some of the clouds above it were fluorescent, or fluorescent orange and that foggy haze right over there it was just it was really beautiful. Okay, so uh, back to the patch. Um, trying to count how many pumpkins that I got growing. And if I can get in here without being chased by the bees. <laughs> <laughs> and just speak of the devil in there, they rose on me. I said bee in there and they were on me. Oh, yay, yeah, caramba. I am so sorry. I am so... He buzzed right, right by my ear. Scared the living daylights out of me. Okay what I don't do for you people. Ooh, they're getting all over it. I mean, there are tons in here today. They, I mean, I they are just going crazy. Um, maybe I'll have to come out and do an evening time pumpkin patch uh, video where I can get in there and show you a little bit more close up of some of the pumpkins and things. Um, and potential pumpkins, depends on what happens but uh, I know I have a female flower one of the smaller variety of pumpkins that uh, uh, bloomed this morning so I'm hoping it gets pollinated I got a bigger pumpkin inside in the middle of the patch in there growing um, it's starting to get like a peachy salmon orange color it's a decent size um, I wouldn't say it's gigantic. I don't even think it's 50 pounds at this point in time or whatever, 40 pounds. But who knows? Uh, as you can see, all the vines have come out here into the grass and it's just kind of taken over. And uh, you can see um, female flower right there, pumpkin that looks like it got pollinated, but a few more days will tell tail and then there was a pumpkin on the same vine that opened up uh, already right there 
Uh, that's kind of unusual to have a pumpkin, um, number one, that's that close to another pumpkin, but also that it opened up and bloomed. Usually a pumpkin plant will only try to uh, bloom one flower at a time, female flower. And to have a second one go off that soon after the first, uh, one of them, that usually indicates that the first pumpkin on the one to the right there didn't get uh, pollinated. And that's why this other one opened. But now that happened about a week ago when on the other side of the patch, one flower opened up and another one did. Same situation like this, but the first one actually was pollinated. And unfortunately, I nearly snapped that pumpkin completely off the vine. And that's why that one's not really doing a whole lot of growing at all. It's just going to be a runt. And that's my fault. I try to, I try to do my little thing that I do which is I try to set the pumpkin up straight and that requires the bending of the pumpkin. And well, it's almost literally snapped the whole thing off. You gotta be super careful. I've lost pumpkins before in the past, but I've also been able to get it right and you know, grow a nice good shaped pumpkin and not have ones that are flat on the sides. Uh, so I know, like I said, I'm just gonna try to count what I got blooming today I know I got one in the middle of the patch. I got one right there. Okay. So that's a total of two. And there's another one right there. Okay, that's three. At least I can see. Mm. That's a male flower back there, it looks like. Three, let's see, I know there's more. Just gonna take you around. Oh, there's one right there. There's four, right there. Okay, there's number five, right there. You can see the cucumber beetles in there doing their little dirty deeds. Let's see. You can see all the male flowers sticking up. Um, five. See, now there is a female that may have gotten bloomed. I uh, may have gotten pollinated, but it's too early to tell. Uh, so I said that was five. Yeah, that's a female right there. There's six. Um, there's seven right there with a B in it. Um, coming out here. was another female that opened the other day right down in there. Don't know if it got pollinated. So I was on seven, right? There's number eight of the females right there. There's number nine right there. That's a Halden. And I think that's it. So it's interesting because it took quite a while for this side of the patch over here to really get going, to really as far as like start getting some females going. I just wasn't sure. And lesson for me to learn is that I need, these larger pumpkin varieties need to get in the ground sooner than the smaller ones. Um, they, because you know, if, if they're going to not set fruit until a little bit later, you need more time for that fruit to grow to its maximum size and uh, you know we're still at the beginning of September so it's still got the month of September and you know through October you know to really get as big as it's going to get so we'll see what happens um, like I said I'll try to 
get in here to the patch later on this evening. Maybe I can uh, shoot a video, get a little bit of up close on to some of the ones that I know are growing. Um, I know I had a white one, I thought, in here growing in here somewhere, but it's a little bit hard to find at this moment. Wait a minute, I think I just found it. Yep, I just found it. Let's see if I can carefully get in here. See it right there? There he is. You can see he's got water collecting on there. And I might have to get in here and um, if that doesn't dry out, I'm gonna have to get in there and suck some of that water out with my little hypodermic needle and suck that water out because you could get some kind of rot going on and uh, so I don't want that. Um, so anyhow, um, over here, you know, still got the dragon fruit. The fig tree took a hit, but it's starting to come back a little bit. Uh, I think it just got dehydrated and I just didn't, uh, you know, save it in time. Um, I think, uh, I think my uh, orange tree is starting to get a little, a little something here. I'm not sure, but uh, taking a look at these oranges that are growing. You know, some of them are appearing to ripen. They're not falling off the tree, so that appears to be a good sign. And uh, we'll go from there and... All right, well, like I said, I'll go back and rack my brains about those uh, raspberry plants and see what I can find out. Keep you updated on the strawberry patch and keep you up on the onions and the onions will go in and go in at the same time the ra uh, strawberries will. I'm hoping that my raspberry plants will get enough growth on them and everything before winter sets in and Hopefully they'll survive, and they're supposed to, but we'll see. Oh, by the way, here's the pumpkin that fell. And then when it fell off the thing, so you can see part of the, and it's, I don't know what's happening here, sun scold or something. And so, yeah. See, it doesn't look all that big to, to cause it to fall off, but you just never know sometimes. All right, so you see the fog is clearing. So from Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch, you guys take care. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Have a good day. Bye.